Episcopalians have a, a, a bishop named Mark Dyer. We actually have too many bishops. That's one of the problems, but that's a different issue. Um, uh, uh, Mark Dyer, who some 20, 25 years ago first began to talk about the rummage sale. Uh, and he says, and many of you have already heard this before from me or from somebody else, saying that if you want to understand um, what's going on in the church right now, you have to understand that about every 500 years we feel compelled to have a rummage sale, a giant rummage sale, as a matter of fact, and we're having one right now. And he's absolutely right. But he goes on very quickly to say several things, the first of which is that a rummage sale is not necessarily a bad thing. It truly isn't. A rummage sale is uh, where you get rid of a lot of your junk. Uh, and you just do. And if you're lucky, you even sell some of it to your neighbor, but that's a different and less moral <laughs> issue. Uh, but uh, none, you get rid of, of a lot of your junk. And then he tells the tale, um, and it's kind of an interesting one, you also find things that you've lost uh, and that you find great value in. When we say every 500 years the church feels compelled to have a giant rummage sale, we need to be far more specific than that. Uh, obviously the 500 years is there. Uh, if you go back 500 years from where we are right now, it doesn't take a genius to know you hit the Great Reformation, right, of the 16th century. You all know this or you wouldn't be here. If you go back 1,000 years from where we are right now, you hit the Great Schism or the Great Schism according to where your mother grew up and taught you to say it. It's the same thing regardless of what you call it. Uh, if you go back 1,500 years from now, you hit the Great Decline and Fall. Uh, which has fortunately had its name right from the get-go. Uh, and if you go back 2,000 years uh, from now, you hit the Great Transformation or the Great Transition. And somehow academics can't make up their minds which one it is, but one or the other. It's the time when we was so significant that we changed the dating of the era. The rummage sale happens every 500 years. It happens in that part of the world that received or was susceptible to receiving its Christianity through the Latin language as opposed to the Syriac or the Greek language, or was colonized by people who were susceptible to receiving their Christianity through the Latin language versus the Syriac or the Greek language, or was colonialized by people who so received. There's nothing special about receiving your Christianity through the Latin language. What is, what is important here is the susceptibility to that way of understanding culture and organizing thought, which is to say it takes the whole Mediterranean basin which is to say that that's why it can also occur in Judaism and Islam, that every part, of the, every part of that part of the world was susceptible to that mindset and has become for some reason susceptible or has always been susceptible to this form of patterning. So also have those places that were colonized and then colonialized which is a long way around of saying that while we think emergence Christianity is the particularity of North America, it is not. North America comes to emergence last. Of all the parts of the world, it comes to it last. You can't really honestly see it in this country in any popular level until the 80s. You can see it earlier in the 40s and 50s, and I'll show it to you, but at a popular level, at a consciously aware level, it doesn't come among us until about the 1980s. And then the next thing that Bishop Dyer would say is, that because we are religion people, we are concerned with the 800 thing, uh, with the 500 year thing in terms of religion and what it means to religion. And the first thing we have to understand is that every time we go through one of these upheavals, every single time we go through one of these upheavals, whatever form of the faith held hegemony, whatever form holds pride of place, has to drop back and reconfigure, but it does not cease to exist. What's happening every 500 years is that the river we call Christianity is developing or assuming or getting a new tributary. What is will continue. Roman Catholicism did not cease to exist 500 years ago. Greek Orthodoxy did not cease to exist 1,000 years ago. Protestantism isn't going to cease to exist. And the truth of it is, whether we like it or not, if Roman Catholics 500 years ago had been as neurotic about statistics as we Protestants are now, they would have all shot the Pope and gone to China. Uh, <coughs> there, there was nothing to make Protestants out of except Roman Catholics. So of course the figures went down, the demographics went down. It didn't mean Christianity was dying, it meant Christianity was growing. Uh, and let me sidebar here just long enough to say that one to me of the more endearing um, 
characteristics of emergence Christianity is that they are absolutely passionate about the scripture. Don't mess with them. Absolutely far more passionate about the scripture. If you, and I'm painting with a broad brush and I'm making a broad generalization. If there were such a thing as an ordinary emergence and an ordinary Protestant, uh, which obviously there's not, the ordinary emergence Christian is going to be far more passionate about the scripture than the ordinary Protestant or the ordinary Protestant's granddaddy or great granddaddy has been for about a hundred years. Uh, big, big, big difference because the emergence, typically, if there be an average one, the average emergence will believe in the actuality of Scripture and not its factuality. And there is a huge difference. This sounds like a play on words. It's not a play on words. That is, emergence theology assumes that there is a huge arrogance, a huge arrogance, in thinking that we can reduce the words of God Almighty to that which is logical to the human mind, to the finitude of our conceptualization or that which is written outside of time by, by God who is outside of time can be in any way grasped and reconciled by those of us who are captured within time. And therefore, Scripture is absolutely actually true. It will not necessarily be factually true to our frame of reference. And it's an important distinction. It has freed the Scripture to have an authority and a beauty and a magnificence that Protestantism had to a large extent almost drained it free of.